Our goal in this video is to use a simplified model of Earth's atmosphere to calculate the temperature of Earth's surface. So let's take a look at our model. We have this one layer of gas. We're just thinking of the whole atmosphere as just one layer of gas that acts as a unit. And this gas in our model is completely transparent to visible light. So you can see the light coming in from the sun, this visible light coming in, passing through the atmosphere uh, and hitting the surface of the Earth. We're also assuming that the atmosphere absorbs 100% of any incoming infrared radiation. And finally, we're assuming that the light from the sun is 100% visible light. It's not just visible light. There's also some infrared light and some UV light and, and some other things mixed in there. Uh, but for the purposes of this model, uh, we're assuming it's all visible light. That's, that's somewhat true. It is mostly visible light, but it's not, it's not completely true. So I guess a more realistic model would be many, many layers of gas that are all mostly opaque to infrared light and mostly transparent to visible light. So this model does have some issues and it won't actually get us the right answer, but it will allow us to start thinking about how we might treat an atmosphere mathematically and we'll get something that's actually not too far from the truth. So let's get to it. The first thing I want to notice is that if this whole Earth atmosphere system is in a stable state, if it's at a constant temperature, the energy coming in from the sun has to be the same as the energy leaving the atmosphere. There is infrared light coming off of the Earth, but according to our model, all of that is absorbed by the gas. So the only light, the only radiation, the only energy leaving the system and flying off into space is this, is this P out, this, all of these little arrows of infrared radiation coming off of the atmosphere. So I'm going to write that balance as, as P sun equals P out. So I'll write that down, P sun equals, I'll switch colors, equals P out. And in previous videos, we talked about black body irradiation a little bit. And so if it's confusing to you why, why the gas in the atmosphere is actually radiating infrared light away from it, that's just something that all matter does that is above absolute zero. And we talked a little bit more about that uh, in previous videos. But anyway, we have our, our first equation here that the, the power, the rate of energy coming in from the sun is the same as the rate at which energy is flying into space because of this radiation outward from the atmosphere. Now, the next thing I want to notice is that the power radiated outward from this atmosphere, this, this spherical shell, or I guess it's just a circular shell in this drawing, but the power radiated outward is equal to the power radiated inward. So I'll write that here. So all of these things are equal to one another. P out equals P in. And I think the easiest way to make sense of that is just to remember that we're thinking basically of this atmosphere as one object. And the way black body radiation works is the light is radiated directly away from the surface, at, at perpendicularly actually. So perpendicularly away from the surface, that's where it's going. And then on the inside, uh, this is also a surface, so it's also radiating inward. But anyway, the point is the energy radiated outward from the atmosphere uh, is, is, the, is the same as the energy radiated inward, or, or the amounts are the same. Now, the next thing I want to notice is that if the Earth itself is going to be at a constant temperature, the energy radiated outward from the Earth's surface has to be equal to the energy radiating inward. And there are two sources. There's the radiation from the sun coming through the atmosphere and hitting the Earth. And then there's also this P in, this inward radiation from the atmosphere. So to write that down, we can say that P uh, sub E, so this is the power being radiated from the Earth's surface, is equal to P sun, the power radiation from the sun, plus P in. P in is, is the uh, radiation coming to the Earth from the atmosphere. Now, from this equation, or from this equation up top, we know that P in is actually equal to P sun. So we can rewrite this equation. I'll just write another line here. Equals two times P sun. Two times P sun. P in equals P sun, and P sun plus P sun is just two P sun. So now we have that PE, and I'll just write it here to be clear. Oops, that's the wrong color. Uh, PE 
the radiation coming out of the Earth is actually twice the incoming radiation from the Sun. So we see that by adding this one layer atmosphere, we actually doubled the amount of radiation hitting the surface of the Earth, and therefore doubled the amount that the Earth has to radiate away. And to radiate away that extra, that extra energy, the Earth has to be hotter. So now if we just know P-Sun, we can plug it into this equation and get the temperature. So let's actually write, write out that next step here. So I'll write uh, 2 p sun, 2 p sun in the numerator here, over the surface area uh, times the Stefan-Boltzmann constant and the fourth root. Okay, so now we just need to find p sun and we'll get our temperature. So let's try to find p sun. On the last video, we already calculated p sun, and what we got was that p, oops, we got that p sun was equal to the intensity of the sunlight when it arrives at Earth, which is uh, the, which we call s. We also might call it the solar constant. Then we multiply this intensity times the cross-sectional area of the Earth, which is the amount of light that, that the Earth blocks, which is just pi times the radius of the Earth squared. I'll just write r sub e so we can remember it's the Earth's radius squared. And then finally, we have to account for the reflection of this light off of the Earth, since not all of it is absorbed. And that's one minus alpha, the albedo that we talked about in the last video. And if this is confusing to you, we, we went through this a little bit more slowly in the last video when we calculated the temperature of the Earth if there were no atmosphere. So let's plug this in to our expression here. Now we have S times pi r of the earth squared times uh, this factor here, the fraction that is absorbed, and now our denominator. So A, this area down here, is the surface area of the earth, so we can just plug in uh, the radius of the Earth into our formula for the surface area of a sphere, and that is 4 times pi times the radius of the Earth squared. You see we're going to get some canceling. And then we can multiply by the Stefan-Boltzmann constant. And also take the fourth root here. Fourth root. So we see that these cancel, so it actually doesn't depend on the radius. I'm sorry, I forgot this uh, factor of 2 here. I was thinking, wait a minute, we're coming up with exactly the same thing. But that's because we were missing this factor of 2, this doubling of, of the energy that the Earth has to radiate away from itself. So there's a 2 here. So I'll take one more step simplifying this. And so we get 2, and I'm writing this 2 in red to emphasize that this is the difference we're getting uh, between the atmosphere and no atmosphere case. And then we're getting S times the 1 minus alpha, the albedo. And then in the denominator, we have a 4. Could have canceled a 2 here, but I, but I wanted to keep this here just to, to draw the distinction between this case and, and the previous case, times the Stefan-Boltzmann constant, and then take the fourth root. All right, so let's finish up by plugging some numbers into this and, and getting an answer. So borrowing from the previous videos, we have that S equals 1,360 watts per square meter, watts per square meter. The albedo, alpha, is 0 0.3. That means 30% of the light coming into Earth is actually reflected away and not absorbed. And then the Stefan-Boltzmann constant is 5.67 times 10 to the negative eighth power. And that's easy to remember because it goes 5, 6, 7, 8. And then the units are watts per meter squared Kelvin to the fourth power. And finally, we get, using a calculator, about 303 Kelvin, which is about 30 degrees Celsius, 
And that's about the temperature of a warm summer day. If you're in the USA and you use Fahrenheit, it's about 85, which is a little bit higher than the actual average temperature of the Earth. But comparing this to the roughly 18 or 19 degrees Celsius we got for the Earth without an atmosphere, we can see that, that this one layer atmosphere definitely did make the planet a bit warmer. 